tomorrow. Good morning again. We have a guest speaker, and some of you know him. Anybody that's new here or has not heard them, uh, you don't know him. <laughs> well, unless you do, of course, but. Uh, um, Interesting man, has a fascinating background, Rosicrucian, um, studied Egyptian mysticism, um, was a hippie, oh never mind, never mind about that part. Uh, and a uh, priest from the liberal Catholic Church. Go figure that one out. Christopher. Thank you, Phil. Zombies. <laughs> How do you follow that? Um, well, I guess I could do a commercial. My daughter has a website. She makes beads, right? The name of her company is called Zombies. <laughs> True story. And if you go online and look, um, she's got a couple of her girlfriends that pose like zombies with her jewelry on. So check it out. Zombies. Yeah, zombies. That's my daughter, Sandrina. She's the smallest, youngest one, my throwback to my hippie days. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. <laughs> we could talk about that, couldn't we? Uh, first thing I wanted to do uh, this uh, morning was thank the prayer warriors for all of their energy and all of the love that's been coming towards my way since I've had cancer. And I really, really want to let you know how much I appreciate that and how much that really touches my heart. Uh, also, if there's somebody that wants to practice doing some energy work, I could use a little bit on my shoulder right after services. So whoever wants to work on me, I'm yours. <laughs> Strange thing happened to me. Um, a lot of times, I just show up here and talk. And uh, I was walking, Phil and I work in the same office building, and I was walking through the building, was it Wednesday, Phil, I believe? And I, he was in his office, because he's not always in his office. Uh, he was in his office, and so I stopped and went, you're not going to believe this. He looks at me and goes, what? I said, I'm preparing Sunday's talk. <laughs> I normally don't do that. I normally just come here. But something kept pressing on me and pressing on me and pressing on me. So I put something together. All things happen for a reason, right? Yes? yes? Agree? No matter what it is, it happens for a reason. Agree? agree. Right? Okay. So we had the Boston Marathon bombing that happened in Boston and Dorchester, my place of birth, uh, that was pretty horrendous, actually. A lot of things went on with that. Then after that happened, we had the factory that exploded in Texas. Um, I believe what I have here for information is that when I started looking at this, there were 14 people plus people that had gotten killed at that and 140 were injured. And then this statistic came out, 50 to 60 homes in a five block area were either destroyed or damaged. Huge. Then, you, you, you stand there and you go, wow. And, it, and then in Bangladesh, the building collapses. And what I had for information, and as of last night, as soon as last night, they were still finding survivors. They were still finding survivors last night. So hopefully they found some more this morning, who knows. But there was a, at least 2,013 people rescued out of that. The last time I took statistics here. But all things happen for a reason. Agree? No matter what it is, it happens for a reason. Agree? Yes? 
Whether you do this consciously or unconsciously, as humans, we endeavor to keep the things that we like and the things that we enjoy. It doesn't matter if we do it consciously or unconsciously, we do strive to keep the things in our lives that we enjoy, the things that we like. And those things could be, I listed a few things here, those things could be our youth, they could be our pleasures, our understandings, our power, our lovers, our bliss. All those things we try to keep. You might be doing it unconsciously. You could be doing it consciously, but we do strive to do that as humans. But we also try to keep away the things that we don't enjoy. Like aging. Illness, loneliness, unhappiness, misery, all of those things, we either consciously or subconsciously push those things away from us. Okay? We actually make a great effort to hold on to the things that we're afraid that we might lose. The things that we like, the things that we enjoy our health, our youth, our happiness. Ultimately, we even try to push death away. Ultimately. But, all things happen for a reason. Agree? No matter what it is, it happens for a reason. Agree? So then to discover real freedom, it is very useful to investigate what you are trying to keep and what you are afraid to lose. Hmm. As we grow spiritually, we can easily recognize that trying to keep everything is kind of fruitless for the things that we're going to surely lose. We can all remember great moments of health and pleasure and understanding and romantic love and even ecstasy. And I think if we stop and go back and look in our past and things that we've done, there were all of these wonderful, beautiful, great experiences that we've all experienced. I was having a cup of coffee this morning, walking around my yard and the fence and my neighbor uh, was out with this, his little boy and he just got back and he's all dressed in white shorts, white white t-shirt and he had done, ran for two miles. He's young. <laughs> I'm not running for two miles. <laughs> and he goes, and he's all happy, he says, I just ran two miles. I get up every morning and I love to watch the sun come up while I'm running. And I'm saying to myself, Scott, that's wonderful. That's his youth. He's living that experience right now. And if you think about our own youth, even those of us that are still young, okay, there's certain experiences that we go back and we think about, and we rethink about, and we go, oh, that was a great experience. I wonder if I could do that again. I wonder if I can recapture that experience. And many of us spend a lot of time trying to do that, trying to recapture the things that we like, the things that we enjoy, our youth, our health, our happiness, all those things. But at the same time, we want to push away the things we don't like. We want to push away from us the things that bring us sorrow, the things that bring us down, the, the people that we don't seem to really jive with. We want to push those things away. And we do that either consciously or subconsciously. But we do do it. But, all things happen for a reason. Agree? Okay. No matter what it is, it happens for a reason. Agree? Okay. We have all heard spiritual statements such as silence is always there, awareness is always there, and awareness is what you are. We've all heard those things. We may have experienced at least a glimpse of these truths, but a glimpse of a truth 
can also be lost because a glimpse of the truth is an experience. I think I've talked to you uh, in the past about an experience I had called, and I call it Satori, or a moment of Christ consciousness, or cosmic consciousness, or whatever you want to call it. And one of the things that's really outstanding and interesting about that particular type of an experience is when you go through that experience, to be able to describe what that experience was like to another person is almost next to near impossible. And the closest I've ever come to being able to describe it, and it doesn't even begin to touch it, is to say that as far as I could see for a nanosecond, if it was even that long, I had complete consciousness of everything. The stones that were underneath my feet, everything. And that's as close as I can get to describing to what that experience was. And it's not even close to really what that experience was. Can I go back and capture that experience? I don't know. I've never been able to have that moment that I had in the past in the moment that I'm living now. It's lost in that past. You will lose eventually everything, although deep inside you know this to be true. There is usually a subconsciousness that's going on that's desperately grasping for hope. Maybe not me. Maybe. Maybe not me. Maybe I won't lose this. Maybe I won't lose this experience. Not me. Eventually, no. All will be lost at one point. Unknown in time, your life, my life, will come to an end. And with it, your relationships, your experiences, all of your defeats, all of your victories, all of your attainments. Everything will be gone. In this, for the mature mind is true. But all things happen for a reason. Agree? No matter what it is, it happens for a reason. Agree? Agree. In our past, there was a great rarity when a person, when a master or an adept stepped forward to proclaim and say that life is eternal. It cannot be lost. It is the truth of who we are. We have seen masters and adapts come forward and say that. And there's generally big, I, how do I want to say that, spaces of time in between them. In general, the great and rare beings that talked of this have been misunderstood. And let me explain why. And I'm not saying this is you. But the way most people heard them was based on hope. If I get what this great being is saying, then I will have what this great being has and it will never be taken away from me. Then all energy is directed in trying to get something or trying to figure something out. What I'd like you to do this morning, if just for one moment this morning, what I would like you to do is to see yourself as eternal life. Let everything else go. Imagine everything lost. Imagine everything gone, except the core of your being. 
If you could do that for just a moment. If for that one moment you can allow yourself the experience of losing everything, really losing everything, you can tell the fundamental truth of what is always present within you. Always, always present within you. In every moment. You can understand directly for yourself what those great masters and adapts were pointing to. You can understand the scriptures as the overflowing of your own experience, not as, not as something to work towards, but actually the real singing of the core of who you truly are. Not something you're striving for, not something that you're reaching for, but something that is already there within you. The core of your being, your eternal life, the true essence of who you are. All things happen for a reason, agree? No matter what it is, it happens for a reason, agree? Eternal life is present in you right now. Right now. Eternal life is present in you. In every single one of you. Right now. You have the capacity to realize this because you are what realizes itself. I've got to read that one again. You have the capacity to realize this because you are what realizes itself. Embrace that. You have the capacity to realize self. What is rare in the past needs not be rare in the present, in the now. It is limited thinking to believe that since self-realization had been rare in the past, that it must continue to be rare today, in this moment. This is a thought form that keeps the mind encased in denial and hope. And I've talked about thought forms before, and it's really interesting because we carry them around. You know the circus person that has the balloons? He's carried all those balloons? Well, your thought forms, you carry them around with you. And thought forms are made up of energy that you actually create, all right? And they will dissipate after time. And the only way they can continue is to kind of push at you and go, think of me, think of me, give me some more energy, think about me. And that's what thought forms do. So if you have a thought form that's not very positive and it's feeling itself starting to shrivel up because you're getting a lot more spiritual, you're getting a lot more in the now, you're becoming more and more in tune to your eternal life. And this little old thought form back here, the, the negative ones and the self-doubt ones are going, Oh my gosh, dear God, we're going to shrivel up and die. <laughs> <sighs> Let them die. <laughs> Let them die. All forms appear in you, all emotions appear in you, all phenomena appears and disappears in you. All things exist in you. You are, in essence, one and 
all. You're one and all. In essence, that's what we really are. All things happen for a reason, agree? Yes. No matter what it is, Amen. it happens for a reason, agree? agree? The attention, the energy, and the time that you have spent in trying to get something that can, can't really be got can now be set free. Okay? All that attention, all that energy, all that worrying, you can set all that energy free. And now you can take that freed energy and use it for deeper, deeper exploration, self-exploration. Focus it more onto, into what you truly are. Our minds can be used for deeper exploration. Uh, what is really immortal, already present, already true, already you, eternal life. Because that's what you really are. That's really what you are. There is um, a lady that goes by the name of the piano lady. If you Google piano lady Nancy, you'll come up with her page. And I love it because it's all purple. <laughs> and I love purple. And her name is Nancy, and my wife's name is Nancy. So that's kind of how I came across this page in the first place. It just kind of, that energy from that particular name just kind of, mm, you know, pulled me towards it. And she wrote something about a friend of hers that passed away. And I want to share that with you. These are her words, not mine, but I really, really resonate with these words. Sometimes people come in our lives and you know right away they were meant to be there. Yes? Yeah? Okay. To serve some sort of purpose, teach you a lesson, or help you figure out who you are or what you want to become. You never know who these people may be, but you lock eyes with them. You know that that very moment that they will affect your life in some profound way. How many has had that experience? I'm not surprised with this group. <laughs> And sometimes things happen to you at times that may seem horrible, painful, and unfair. But in reflection, you realize that without overcoming those obstacles, you could never realize your potential, your strength, your willpower, or your heart. Everything happens for a reason. Nothing happens by chance or by means of luck, illness, love, lost moments of true greatness, and sheer stupidity all occur to test the limits of our soul. Without these small tests, life would be like a smooth, paved, straight, flat road to nowhere safe and comfortable, but dull and utterly pointless. The people you meet affect your life. The successes, the downfalls that you experience can create whom you are. And the bad experience can be learned from. In fact, they are probably the most poignant and important ones. If someone hurt you, betrayed you, or broke your heart, Forgive them because they have helped you to learn about trust. And the more important of being cautious to whom you open your heart to. If someone loves you, love them back 
unconditionally. Not only because they love you, but because they are teaching you to love and to open your heart and your eyes to little things. I think last month, remember I talked about the book, Dick and Jane, in the biggest word we learn, L-O-O-K, look. Yeah. Make every day count. Appreciate everything that you possibly can, for you may never experience it again. Be in the moment. Eckhart Tolle is so right on, and so many who have said that. Be in the moment. Fully. Talk to people whom you have never talked to before and actually listen. How's that for us? <laughs> <laughs> Let yourself fall in love. Break free and set your sights high. Hold your head up because you have every right to. Tell yourself that you are a great individual and believe in yourself. For if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will believe in you. Create your own life and then go out and live it. And she dedicated this to her friend um, Levi, uh, who left the world actually in 2004 on April 7th. And her last words on this was, I will never forget the difference you made in my life. Piano Lady Nancy. And on those words, I would like to leave this with you. I will never ever forget the difference that this congregation has left and makes moment by moment on my life. I cannot tell you what it has done for me, the transformation that I have gone through to be able to come here and speak to you. Because as I go deeper into things and I keep discovering things and I get deeper into self and I come here and I share that, it's one thing to do that by oneself in meditation. There's bliss and there's beauty in that. It's another to share it. When the young man came up here and sang this morning, he was sharing part of his all with us. When any of you come up here, be it to give thanks on the uh, blessings that are going out, or the baskets that we pass out, or you're in the kitchen doing things, or just to sit here and be part of this collective, you're contributing to that. It is huge. It is beautiful. It is blissful. And it, for me, it is truly a joy. Songs are wonderful things. There's a song in this book. I sit up here a lot of times and I'll, I'll go through these and I'll, I'll just read what people have written. It's amazing what they write. Uh, so I'm just going to take a little piece out of this one. I'm not even going to say what the song is because Phil has a habit of when I do this, he'll go and put that song on and goes, well, we don't know that song. <laughs> so you're not getting the title, Phil. <laughs> but here's a part of the chorus. It says, somewhere in time the truth shines through. The spirit knows what it has to do. Somewhere in you there is a power with no name. It can rise to meet the moment and burn like a flame. And you can be stronger than any fear you know. Hold on to what you see. Don't let go. Don't let go. Put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So celebrate who you are. Celebrate that core. Celebrate the eternal life. That is the essence of who you are. 
That's who you truly are. You're not all the stuff that's out there. You're the stuff that's in here. Mr. Phil. Before we do communion, I'd like to do a slight shameless self-promotion. Uh, the teleconference I'm going to do on the 9th, I've entitled that Shaman's Journey, and I'm going to lead you through the experience that Christopher was talking about, how to experience all that is. And the good news is, is that because it's a teleconference that um, you'll be able to download a copy of that to your computer. You can burn a CD to iPad or iPhone or whatever, uh, and you'll have that forever. The class is limited to 25. I don't have a sign-up sheet yet, so just consider that. But that experience, I had that when I was like seven. And all, all of a sudden, I just experienced all of it. And it kind of freaked me out. But it's a wonderful experience, and even if you can't hang on to it forever, having that experience can can really anchor your soul and give you some real strength in that. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And while I'm on that, the uh, the one at the end of the month on the 30th is the inter interdimensional shift. Um, and that's a pretty interesting thing. We'll talk about that another time. So I don't promote myself well, do I? That's why I have Phil. So if you have any questions on that, let me know. So shifting gears, communion is a Christian tradition. Whether you're Christian or not, you're welcome to participate in that. Um, unleavened bread, if you like the tradition of that. Rice cakes, if you're wheat intolerant. Animal crackers, if you'd like to honor Native American pathway. Whatever works for you works for us. So would you join us in prayer, please? Loving Spirit of Light, thank you for that sense of eternity that is gifted to us. Help us to call upon that. Help us to reach for that. And allow us to joyfully experience that. And let it harmonize our life. And these things we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. As that continues around, would you join us in prayer, please? Loving Spirit of Light, as we drink this in, help us to drink in the truth of our spiritual greatness. Help us to drink in the truth of who we really are. Help us to remember that. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. the gratitude. Of course, most people have better handwriting than I do. That is true. Since I was a small child, mom told me I was going to be a doctor because she couldn't read my handwriting. <laughs> so. Or a lawyer. Yeah, or a lawyer. No. No. <laughs> Never. Thank you, Daryl, for donating the burgers for last Sunday's barbecue. They were delish.
These are gratitudes. We have a basket in the back, and these are just exactly what they are. They're gratitudes for anybody, anything, anything you want to give gratitude to. Uh, thank you to Joe. Who wrote these? Thank you to Joe and Valerie for your kind giving ways and the love of for us all. Well, for Pete's sakes. Thank you, Christopher, for your wisdom and charm. Amen to that. Do they know you? I'm sure they do. Had something happen uh, this morning that was rather unusual. Had someone come up to me and, and say, I, I want to do the basket. I want to do the basket. I want to do the basket. I know. It actually happened. Imagine that. So. Brianna. And what's even more surprising is she probably is going, and he actually remembered. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. That's a miracle. Thank you, Brianna. So, uh, mostly I just wanted to get up here so that I could say thank you to all of you, especially to Janice and Phil, for creating this beautiful church home. Um, the Divine Fellowship is really unique because it is so welcoming and loving and accepting of everybody's beliefs. Um, and it's really been a blessing in my life, and I know that it's been a blessing to so many of us here. Um, and it's really changed the way that I relate to spirituality and to god and, or higher spirit whatever you want to call it and also other people um and it's really and coming here it has made me a stronger better person um and so it's really wonderful to be able to give back to a place that gives us so much um whether it's money or your time or uh even just like a blessing as the basket goes by <sighs> sorry <laughs> i'm a little shaky um so this is the reason I wanted to get up here was to to really thank all of you because this is going to be my last official Sunday because I'm moving away in a week. Um, <laughs> happened very fast, uh, but it's really exciting and wonderful. But I just really wanted to give my gratitude to all of you um, for helping to make me that stronger, better person that uh, can move on into her own life. So. Thank you so much, and please give what you can, whatever you can, to support this place that supports us so much. So thank you, everyone. I'll miss you. Okay, bye. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Yes. It's a little loud. Uh, as the baskets go around, we can begin to prepare for our meditation. We'll do a, a brief one. Oh, no. What? We have something else we're going to do. Oh, yeah. First. Or maybe in, in light of... Um, <laughs> Valerie and um, Sandy are going to do this. Oh, okay. I mean, Mary and Sandy are going to do this. Mary, come on up. <laughs> First of all, let me set this up for you. Um, Christopher mentioned our prayer warriors. We have about 50 people who pray for each other, pray for you, pray for life circumstances. Um, and we have some amazing miraculous stories that we can share with you about the things that have happened whether it's health issues or personal circumstances or whatever that have been blessed as a result of the prayer warriors so to thank you um, Sandy uh, has put together some little bags um, as a gratitude from all of us it's a divine fellowship gift but I'd like her to explain to you what they are and then Mary will help pass them out I'll hold one up here. These are little Himalayan salt chunks. And the significance is that they are probably one of the most helpful things, healthful things that we can ingest into our system. They have 84 natural essential vitamins, minerals, nutrients, 
and they are nothing like the sodium that your doctor tells you not to eat because that's just sodium chloride. And our ancestors knew that. And I'm going to read this if I can without my glasses. Um, Want to borrow mine? <laughs> <laughs> I think I got it. <laughs> our ancestors knew this and they called it white gold. It was used as payments, it was given to warriors, and it was given as gifts of appreciation. So with this bag of white gold, we would like to thank our prayer warriors. There's some little tags there. You can grind this up over your food and cook with it. You can just throw it in your bath water. And there's a recipe on here for bath salts and soleil. You can actually grind this up, put it in water, seal it for 24 hours, and then drink like a teaspoon every morning and you're getting all those nutrients. Those nutrients are the exact same things that our body has to have to live. So with that, we thank all of you. And Mary Loga is our prayer warrior hero. Coordinator. <laughs> hero. And Mary has dedicated a lot of time. She gets lots of emails and she helps translate that from this big long, oh my gosh, I don't know what to pray for, but here's the situation. And she'll translate that into a, a readable paragraph for us and send it out via email to our prayer warriors. She keeps us updated and posted. Lots of, lots of positive, wonderful things have happened as a result. So however you want to manage that. Do you need a microphone, Mary? Um, I'll hold it if you want to call okay. me up. Um, I'm not sure who else here, because I haven't been able to see around too much, but I did invite anybody who is available to come today. So if you're a prayer warrior or the spouse or partner or family member of a prayer warrior who also helps out, please come up and we will, I'll give you a hug and we'll give you a bag of salt. I want to be first. Okay, here's Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What if you just want a hug? You can have a hug.